Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Let's start our video with a story about persistent caller and a clever payback that taught a lesson about respect. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. Uncle Demands My Birthday Presents so I posted on here a few times, including one about my uncle before. I almost didn't want to post this because what went down was recent and there's the slightest chance a family member might see it. But honestly, whatever. I recently hit the big 21 and came home to celebrate with my family and a few close friends. I wanted to go out to dinner at a sushi place near us and he was not invited to come for a few reasons. He doesn't like sushi. The only foods he eats are pizza, cheese, steaks, and fries. He hasn't made any effort in five years to give me a card or even say happy birthday to me. He's unpleasant to be around and makes people uncomfortable. Example, drunkenly said racist things about my boyfriend at a family function. He's a gross eater, doesn't know how to chew with his mouth closed and makes loud grunting noises while he eats. That morning I had breakfast with my family at a diner. While there, my grandparents told me he wanted to call slash see me that day to say happy birthday. I didn't say anything and let it go. If he really wanted to contact me, he could. And it wasn't my responsibility to come to him on my birthday. The day goes by and I never hear anything from him. That night, we go out and eat. It was awesome. They even brought out a birthday tray with cut up fruit and ice cream. On the way out, my grandma gets a call from my uncle and when she hangs up, she told us he was yelling over the phone and demanding she come get him so he can come over to our house with everyone else since he didn't get invited to dinner. I didn't want this at all, but my grandma insisted. I just let him come and watch me open a couple presents and eat cake, so I begrudgingly said, okay. We get back, and while my grandma's still out getting my uncle, I start to open a few things while everyone chats. When my uncle finally does arrive, it's clear he's been drinking beer for a while now as he bursts through the door and immediately starts shouting. He sits down in his seat near me and says, what's with all these presents for? Which one's for me? As he starts grabbing things and starts to rip off the paper, my dad tells him to stop. That isn't for you. My uncle keeps going, tearing off the paper on a wine bottle and saying, she's too young to have this anyways. I'll just take it. My dad ends up, pulls him away and tells him he has to go. And my uncle starts shouting, don't bleeping touch me. My grandma ended up having to pull my uncle away so he wouldn't start a drunken fight in the dining room. And he storms out the back door to light a cigarette. My dad locks the door on him and my grandma has to go outside and take my uncle home. He never even bothered to say happy birthday to me. Sorry that happened to you. Glad everyone stepped up to get rid of him so he didn't ruin everything for you. Happy belated. And our next story. And our second story. Neighbors stole my plants. I'm a self-professed and admitted plant fanatic. Proud of it. Since the time I was five and successfully got some beans to sprout in a Tupperware container to now, my plants are my pride and joy. One of my oldest plants is a 15-year-old succulent, Haworthia zebrini variegata, if you're curious. I got it when I was 10 for my birthday from my grandpa. I've looked after it ever since, and it's a beautiful and large plant. It even won a few awards at cacti and succulent shows. I told you I was a plant nut. It's not only my pride and joy because it's so unique, but it has great sentimental value since my grandpa gave it to me. He passed away two years ago. We were very close, and he taught me a lot about growing and caring for plants. I think of this particular one, all my plants actually, as my plant baby. I love this one the most, though as it was the first plant that I ever remember wanting, and he was the one who gave it to me. Everybody who sees it comments on it. It's rare to see a specimen as old and big as this one. Everybody who knows me knows how much I love my plants, as if they were living and satiant beings. I play music. I talk to my plants. I have names for them. I fuss over them. My friends make fun of me over my social media pics. I don't really mind, because I take photos of my plants and I caption them. As I said, unapologetic plant geek. I recently bought my first home. I met some of the neighbors, and they seemed friendly. One in particular was pretty chatty. She noticed I had some plants on my porch that she took interest in and asked me about them. Me, of course, being the plantaholic that I am, told her what they were, 
Her eyes got wide and she was like, oh, I've been looking for those for the longest time. We connected over our plant addiction. as She also seemed to grow and collect the same plants that I did. So I saw her around often in the neighborhood. We would often wind up chatting about plants. One day on a whim, I invited her in to show her my collection scattered around my house. She saw my Haworthia and oohed and awed over it. She asked me if she could take it off set and I said no. The doing so was out of the question. For people who don't know, succulents, this particular kind, grows into a mound as it gets older. Each offset grows tightly next to another one. Taking an offset leaves holes in the plant, and you just don't do that with a show plant like the one I have. She asked if she could take a few cuttings from some of my other plants, and I told her that I'd think about it, as some of the ones she requested were extremely rare and very slow-growing. Some I wanted to try and enter into shows, and I didn't want to have cut. I told her that she would have to wait for when I felt that some of the plants were mature enough. She got annoyed when I said this and was like, well, plant people are supposed to be generous. I replied, yes, we are, and went on to explain that the ones she was asking for were some of my rarer plants and that I didn't want to divide or take cuttings of them just yet. I gave her a couple of other cuttings, however. Fast forward to three months after me buying my house, I have my first house party. I invited some of my neighbors, including plant neighbor, there were probably about 30 people in attendance. The day after the party, I made my daily rounds on my plants. I noticed that a chunk of my beloved Haworthy is missing. I was like, what the hell happened? I went around and looked at my other plants, and another seven plants also had evidence of cuttings being taken. I have a very rare, variegated Monstera that has some unique leaves on it. One of the best-looking leaves, almost all white, on that plant had been removed. A gardenia tree had an end of a branch taken off. My Pilea peperomoides had a few offshoots missing. My Sanseveria cylindrica, which had six stalks, now had one missing. A branch of hard-to-find Arabian jasmine was cut off. I called my best friend who was at my party. I sobbed on the phone telling her about what happened to my plants, and I couldn't believe what happened. She said that she saw that plant neighbor walking around in my house alone throughout the party but didn't think anything of it. I didn't know how to react, as I have a hard time believing another person who loves plants as she claimed to could do this. My mind was all over the place, between processing that a number of my plants had been damaged, as well as racing over who could have done this to me and my beloved plants. Just a few minutes ago, my best friend called to tell me that she was stalking that plant neighbor's Facebook page. Apparently, plant neighbor recently posted about how she was so excited about getting cuttings of some hard-to-find plants in her trade. She listed three of the plants that I had discovered damaged after my party. Extremely rare ones that aren't easily found, and especially in a trade. She didn't post photos, but the circumstances are too similar. She had wanted cuttings of the very same plants that she now had that I had refused to give her at that time. Now I'm very certain that it was her who took my plants. Add to this that when I tried to find her on Facebook, I couldn't. She has blocked me, so I can't see her at all. But my best friend knows her name, although she doesn't know who my best friend is, and can see everything she posts. I can't even begin to explain to you how full of rage I am right now. It's as if someone had hurt my own flesh. So in general, if it's a rare item like an old tree or plant, you can actually sue for the value, which is upwards of 100K US dollars. The problem now is that you stated your plants are rare, but rarity may not mean it's worth a higher amount of money. And our last story. My neighbor is stealing my water to run their entire irrigation system. About six months ago, I saw someone with a flashlight in our backyard from the upstairs window. So my brother grabbed his Glock and went outside. We saw the guy run towards the river behind our shed near the fence, but when we checked, there was no one there. Then we saw the flashlight in the neighbor's yard right next to the fence that divides our houses on the water. Despite this, my mom and brother didn't want to call the cops, thinking we'd probably scared them away. Big mistake. Today I decided to tan on the roof, and right when I got up there, I heard a man and a woman talking, which sounded like it was coming from our backyard. I walked towards this sound and saw that it was actually coming from the neighbor's yard near the trailer set up on the other side of the fence dividing our houses. I heard the man discussing some scheme or job offer and then the woman said, shh, someone's going to hear you. 
The man replied, there's no one outside. Nothing clicked at the time, so I started playing music, and they stopped talking. Later in the day, I looked at my mom's water bill and realized we were using almost 10 times more water than last year. I moved out a few months ago, but last month, my mom and brother used 17,000 gallons in water consumption and 13,000 gallons in wastewater. Our average neighborhood water consumption is only 13,000 gallons, and the city average is 6,000 gallons. The graph showed a steady rise in usage from last July till now, jumping from using six times less than the neighborhood average to three times more, despite having one less person in the house. My mom said they barely did any laundry last month and didn't water the grass. Flash forward to tonight at 2.45 a.m. I was in bed thinking about the water bill. I went to the roof to check if I could hear any water running, and sure enough, I heard water going full blast. I crawled across the roof and looked over the ledge, seeing that the neighbors had created an entire irrigation system with PVC pipes to water four trees planted inside a makeshift garden in the middle of their yard. I decided to check it out, but by the time I got to the fence, the water was off. I also smelled some kind of chemical smoke in the air. It's strange because the only people who live at that house are an elderly man and his wife, both in their 90s. We recently saw an ambulance pick someone up from that house, unfortunately. Last year, their son set up security cameras facing our house, specifically. His family's known to trap neighborhood cats and call animal control to pick them up even though our neighborhood purposely released them there? I checked all the hoses and they were all off, but when I went to check near the river where the fence divides us, I noticed PVC pipes from the irrigation system spread around next to a thick white pipe in the ground. It might be a sewage pipe? There's also a weird doghouse-shaped thing that might be covering some water system behind our shed. It was there when we moved in 10 years ago and we haven't really checked it out since the shed blocks the view. I'll investigate it further in the morning. Lastly, there's a long silver stick spout in the middle of our backyard with a wheel to turn, like all the other hoses. So I set up a few motion-activated cameras around the backyard. A week later, I caught footage of the neighbor's son sneaking into our yard and hooking up a hose to the spout in our yard. I finally called the police. They came out, reviewed the footage, and followed the PVC pipes to the neighbor's irrigation system. The police arrested the neighbor's son for trespassing and theft. They also fined the elderly couple for unauthorized use of water. The stolen water problem was solved, and I even got an apology from the elderly couple who claimed they had no idea what their son was doing. They offered to pay us for the excess water usage and the damage to our property. Now, with the cameras still in place and the neighbors on notice, our water bill is returned to normal. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.